Good morning, everybody. Dar Sizzle and Puddin coming at you from not our boat today. <laughs> we're up here in Stewart and we're very excited because even though our boat is still broken and we can't go deep sea fishing, we are finally going offshore fishing deep sea with our buddy Eric right behind us on his Rambo. Very excited to get out there. It's been a while for us. Yeah, it's supposed to be a beautiful, beautiful day. And hopefully, uh, yeah, we're so, so excited to get out there and catch some big fish. Yes. And uh, this video is brought to you by DarcizzleOffshore.com, Darcizzle website. We'll talk about that later. Yes. All right, let's go. All right, guys. <laughs> we just went through the train bridge, which took forever, like 20 minute wait there, but we got to get on the water. It's fall conditions out there. It's time to catch a fish. What? Oh, oh sailfish. Sail. You want to catch your first sail? Dicey, dicey, dicey. Oh, you should catch your first sail. No. <laughs> I think, he, I think he just blew it up and took it. He's gone. Right, let's get another bait. Let's get a bait going. Here you go. I got you. Mullet, right? Yes, ma'am. All right. All right, guys. So we just got to the fishing spot. We got four lines out. We got two down, different depths. We're in about 200 feet of water right now. I'm going to get a big mullet here. We just had a sailfish blow up. Hold on one second. And we literally just saw him eat the bait, like within 50 feet of the boat. It was super cool. Um, jumped and he obviously got the bait off the hook there so we're sending the mullet right back out already getting some nice bites this morning about 10 minutes into fishing so we got a north wind and a little bit not a lot of current this morning but you know at the same time we're just gonna bounce around and see what we can put out but so far the sailfish is a great sign that's him that's him <laughs> get off the bottom I think maybe a shark got it. You better get it up. It's a stud fish. It's a nice fish, guys. Stay hooked. Oh, Lord. Might be half a fish. Okay. Yeah, it's coming up too easy now. I think a shark got it. Oh my god, it's a cobia. cobia. Oh my god. No. My cobia got smoked. That's a stud. Keeper for sure. <laughs> what did I tell you? Unbelievable, man. All right, so guys, we found the cobia. This is so unfortunate. I really thought I had a giant grouper or a snapper on because the way this guy was digging back to the bottom, it was an intense fight there for a few seconds. And then all of a sudden, I just felt a drag to the bottom for like 10 seconds. And then it just started floating up and I knew my fish got sharked. That all day, look at the head on the cobia. All day, it's a keeper cobia. Oh yeah. All day. Look, I mean, the size of the shark to take his whole body, I mean, I don't imagine what happened down there. <sighs> when you don't bring your magnets. <laughs> Dang it. All right, well, I guess we kind of half broke the skunk off. <laughs> Let's get another bait down. That is sucky. Ugh. Got my first fish on the slow pitch. Right on. What is that, Sizzle? Is it an Amoco or a regular Amberjack? That is an Amoco. Can I keep it? No, they have to be 27 to the fork. Oh. <laughs> you want this? Here. Yeah, I gotta take a picture of it. You can just throw it, just throw it over the side or whatever, yeah. All right, got a little Amoco Jack. Awesome. All right, let me show, what? What happened to the picture? I don't need a picture. Let me show you my slow pitch jig setup. I don't know if you guys saw that video. We went uh, jigging with uh, Johnny Jigs. He's awesome, he's got a shop at Pompano. He sold me this nice pro jigger rod. I got tranks on it. Here's the jig. And uh, my first pitch, pi first fish on a slow pitch. I did it. That's your first? I think that's my first fish in the boat on a slow pitch. Ever? I've only I've only used the thing like twice. Oh, the other times it got sharked. The other time I got sharked really bad. <laughs> we are doubled up now, baby. Half oh AJ. Oh my god. Look at this. Cannot for the life of me get a fish off the bottom today. Even this little guy, which put up no fight, 
And I was just steady, steady reeling. I saw the shark down there, just eat him 50 feet from the boat. What? It's a little shark. Shark. Son of a gun. All right. Eric helping him over here with the hand line and just popping that shark right off there. All right, so you see that? You see the first fish that I can actually bring to the boat today? It's a shark. I can't even bring a real fish to the boat. Too bad the sharks don't eat the little sharks. Ugh. All right, well that's a standard, probably a little Atlantic sharp nose. So, get retied, get lines back up. See there? It's all yours. Click her off. That is a nicer fish. Go, Sizzle. Smoke into the bottom. Yeah. I know, I can't stop the fish. I think it got sharked. You think? Yep. Thank you. Yeah, he definitely got sharked, 100%. You let go? Yeah, I have half a fish now. Oh. Yep. That's insane what's happening today. Every fish. Whether it's on the surface, mid-water column, on the bottom, second you hook a fish. Oh, here he comes, Sword! Here he comes, Sword! Get the, get the other half! Stud Kobe again! Oh. Holy crap, man! Can't get a Kobe in my boat to save my life! Another beautiful fish right there. 20-pound Kobe, easy, all day. Oh my gosh. I felt half the fish. I mean, the cobia was right here. Took a little bit of line. Those sharks are right under the boat. Getting bit. Nice, get a sizzle. Down 30 foot leader. It's cobia. It is? I have no idea. Huge shark. Got him. He's in his mouth. It was a cobia. There's cobia. The There's the cobia. He's coming to the boat. He's coming to the boat. How big is he? I don't know if he's keeper. Oh my god, the shark's all over him. Where is he? Wait, come over here, Brian. <laughs> Just get him. Just hook him. We'll let him go. Get him in the boat. Get him in the boat. Okay, okay, okay. Holy lord! You got him. I think that's a keeper. I think it's a freaking keeper. Good job! <laughs> Team effort! Dude, I thought that shark ate his butt. I didn't feel him anymore. And right out here I saw massive, massive shark. No joke, this thing was massive. We're gonna quick get a hook out of this guy, get him ready to go so we can show you on the picture here. And uh, yeah, pretty stoked we got one. All right. That was awesome. We're gonna let that cobia chill down for a second. Back at the house, guys. We got our cobia in the cooler here. And once again, just want to give a special shout out to our new friend, Eric, for taking us fishing. And we got our legal cobia. This guy, I'm happy to have, but at the same time, just still really heartbroken over those two big fish that were sharked on me earlier. Just, I've never had so many big fish sharked in one day. And it just goes to show you that the shark problem here in South Florida is just getting worse. And I think I said it on the boat, but it's constant year round battles now with sharks. Next time, I know a lot of you guys mentioned this on social media when I posted it, I'm going to have the Zeppelin with me. I just happened not to be on my boat that day and the, those magnets really do work. All right, so I'm gonna be using my seven inch blade today from Smith, super sharp, ready to go, dive right into this fish. And right before I do, you might notice this beautiful sterling silver fish hook pendant I'm wearing. And this is a brand new item that is very, very popular on the website now for a couple months. So you wanna get on that, the holidays are approaching fast. I have a sale going on on the sterling silver pendants on the website, go check it out. All different kinds of stuff to choose from. Some of the most popular ones are redfish, the sea turtle, the mahi, the fish hook pendants. I got a couple other ones on the website now too. But go check it out and I'd really appreciate it if you support my small business. Um, so again, big sale going on right before the holidays and it's a great gift for yourself or anybody you love, your friends or your family members. Let's dive right into this fish. All right, so he's a little on the smaller side, but once again, a keeper fish. So I can, I'm able to turn him on his side here. If he was a bigger fish and with a bigger head here, it would be harder to work with. But 
with a smaller cobia like this, we can do this. Also, the cool thing about cobia, the bigger they get, the bigger these crazy spines get on the top of their dorsal, right before this fin. You can see these spines, they stick straight out. Obviously, the bigger the fish, the bigger these would be, and the pointier and sharper they would be. But those are very, very dangerous. So you've got a 50 pound cobia, cobia flopping on your deck, you gotta get the heck away from him because he will hurt you with those spines. Really dangerous. But a really fun fish to catch. And again, never caught so many cobia in one day. And it was just so unfortunate to have those fish sharks. But with the sharp knife, you get the job done here. We're just gonna knock off his whole filet here. Just nice, even strokes go over that backbone. It's raised quite a bit, but I'm really excited to have some cobia. The fall run in Stewart has been excellent lately. A lot of people catching cobias uh, fishing and then also spear fishing as well. It's got really thick skin too, so it's easy to work with. You're not gonna cut through it as easily as you think you might. And then over the rib cage bones over here, and get this beautiful slab of meat off. Look at that, Woo, gorgeous. Thank goodness we got a fish for dinner. All right, and there we go. Slab is off. You see we did a pretty good job there. Let's put them to the side. All right, and then the same exact thing. We use the same seven inch blade to take the skin off. We are gonna take the skin off this guy. And whatever is left, the carcass and the skin pieces and whatever I don't use, this is a big piece of the bone. I'm gonna put it in my stone crab traps and stone crabs are gonna love this cobia carcass. So just like any other fish starting at the tail, get in there and keep your, keep your knife up a couple millimeters, not directly on the skin. And you ask why? Because there's a huge bloodline that sits right on the skin, even though this fish was bled. As you see, you go halfway down, stop, cut that beautiful filet off. And then you can see right there, all that blood that's just on the skin line there. But if you keep it up a little bit, you're not gonna get that on your meat, as you can see there. And then just same exact thing, go back in. And we're just gonna take sections of meat. That way we don't mess it up. Take our time. And then slab that off too. And look at that delicious white meat. A Little bit of skin there, not a big deal. Just trim that up. And then you're gonna take the bloodline out of course. You can eat it if you want to, but it's gonna be very fishy. And we are spoiled here in South Florida, so we don't eat the bloodline. That'll go to my crabs and my traps. All right, and then a little piece right there. And so basically you're just keeping, you know, the, your loins, your pieces of steaks here, the same exact size, gonna be easier for cooking. That's why I'm breaking it up into sections here. The thicker pieces, you know, the, the even pieces stay with the even pieces and that just makes it easier, your life easier when you cook cobia. Cobia is one of those fish where you do not want to overcook it because he is just a very muscular fish and it will dry out very quickly if you're not careful. All right, so there's two loins. I'm gonna finish up the last of this loin here. And then I'm gonna meet you guys in the house for the cooking with pudding portion of this video. Very excited to have some cobia. I'm actually freaking starving. So thank you guys for once again, listening to my sale going on on the website. And I'll link all that information down below so you guys can go check it out. And again, really appreciate it if you check out my small business. All right guys, I'm gonna finish this up and meet you in the house. What's up guys? And thanks uh, Darcizzle, of course, for cleaning that monstrous cobia. Very unfortunate we didn't get those other two, but we're gonna go back and get them. Mm -hmm. uh, but welcome guys to another edition of Cooking with Puddin' Kitchen Table Edition. Yeah, I don't know if you guys ever noticed, but I've this is a booth, and I've always loved booths, so I don't understand why everyone doesn't have a booth in their house. Just a little side note, like if you go to a restaurant, you ask for the booth, right? He does. I <laughs> a lot of people do. Anyway, mm. overflowing a little bit there, but let me tell you about cooking this cobia, and uh, then we'll tell you how it is. I think Darcy might have already tried it. I'm not, I'm not totally sure. So I, I know I always say around here that you can cook, you know, we get questions a lot. How do you cook this fish? How do you cook that fish? You can cook most fish pretty much the same. And even Darcy was able to fillet that fish, cobia, which is a little different, but you fillet it the same. Uh, so cobia is one of the, like there's kind of like two groups of fish. One of them would be like snapper, which you can cook the same as snapper, mahi, you know, redfish, grouper, little different things, you know, kind of you can cook those more or less the same way. Another group would be like a, the firmer fish, which, you know, I would call like cobia. 
I would call tuna, uh, wahoo, all right? These are fish, you know, they're a little firmer, like, like I just said, and the cobia being the least firm probably of them, you know, you certainly don't want to overcook them. And a lot of those fish also just want to eat a sushi, which is a be tuna and, and wahoo, of course. So, well, I took, the, I took the fillets that Darcy gave me, and, you know, especially with the cobia, uh, you know, they're gonna be different sizes, all right? So you gotta make sure that you gotta cut them. I, sl I played one and a half to make sure they're all more or less the right size. And I just did very something, I just did something very simple. Cause this is about our third time cooking the cobia uh, online on, on, on YouTube here. And once we did it in, uh, just marinated in Italian dressing, it was delicious. Another time we did a famous captain's recipe, which was on the skewers, remember, with mm -hmm. the bacon? Kebabs. Kebabs, and that was outrageous, delicious. Yeah. But today, I, I just coated it, and you'll see here, with this B-roll, of course, that I have, is just in barbecue sauce. Mm -hmm. Just standard barbecue sauce we had right in the refrigerator. And then, you know, we put it on the grill. And again, you don't, you don't want to overcook it. You can even uh, add a little bit of extra barbecue sauce on there in the middle, or when you flip it, just keep it nice and moist. And then, you know, again, I don't want to, I, I can't overemphasize it, just don't cook it too much. You stick a fork in it to see if it's done, and then you take pieces off that are done first. You don't just let them all sit there for 10 minutes until the fattest piece is cooked, all right? So we take some off as it goes. And th now here we are. We're having it with some plantains, which are big Florida bananas. Wash it down with a land shark, throw a sizzle. Plantains are so good. I love plantains, and actually like complements the cobia perfectly. Okay, but what about and my cobia? Yeah, it's really good. I mean, <laughs> simple is best, especially when it comes to fresh fish, because you want to taste it. But that barbecue sauce, like, just, I don't know, it just seals the deal on the cobia. It's amazing. I'm like, I just devoured a whole piece while he was talking. And then, uh, again, the plantain's a little sweetness to it. It's like a perfect combination. I literally could have a, a bite of plantain with a bite of cobia, and it's so good. So good. And land shark. Yeah, I forgot how the land shark. And again, Thank you guys so much for joining us on this crazy shark adventure. <laughs> Can't wait to get back, get back out there and have redemption on those giant fish. Maybe yes. we'll have this one. We'll, we'll see. see. Huh. All right, until our next adventure. Follow, follow your, your dreams, dreams and, and keep, keep on, on catching. catching. My song's coming along. Whoa. <laughs> you need to start dancing now too. <laughs>